So what happens now if we put, when we do the second one, which is down here, and I'm going to do that using the eyedropper. So I'm going to select this a great place to work. I'm going to use the eyedropper and click on the text that I've done. So that automatically will give you that one and the rule below. Okay, so the same again. So this one, and then I want this thing. I'm going to copy the top one, copy it into there. And I've just, it's a really good way to do it. So all I'm doing, so it saves doing anything twice. And then use these ones to move this stuff around to fit. And that's in there. Okay, so I'm, all I'm doing is using the eyedropper. And what, because this is right now, because whatever this one is, if, so I can click on the icons with the direct selection tool in here. And then move these guys across and then get, so it just saves a lot of work with that. So what happens now, where this is good, is if the client comes along and says, can you get rid of this paragraph? So if I select that word, and if I delete that, all my box and rules and everything will come up accordingly. Same as if I do returns, you can see it's all just going to move here in the one go. So it saves, it makes life a lot easier. So just to do it again quickly, so back to this one. You can do it with eyedropper, or if you this one, we know that our font was... I think we did <coughs> bold italic. Yeah, and we did it capitals, we did it whatever the size was, 9, so we centered all this stuff. Up here we centered it, okay, it's red, so this is just doing it from scratch again, so this is right. I want my cursor to go in there, so I'm going to paste the icons anywhere, so file, place, find your icons, and just randomly put them there. Okay, right click, high quality, so I'm going to get that down to... The, the size of an icon, right? So this is okay. So edit, we're going to cut that icon into here. We're going to paste him in there. Okay. So we'll use baseline shift to get it in the right spot. And then literally just go from there, okay? We're going to put our cursor here. You can see now we're building the rules. So as long as my cursor's here, this one, paragraph rules, this one we want rule above. Turn it on offset here we're going to move it up to where it's going to go make it a bit thinner make it red and if you wanted to be clever this is different to the other way but we're working off this return right here you could do this one you could say rule below and you could run both rules off the same return so rule below turn it on and we could offset that one right down and that bottom rule could work the top if that's okay so that one's 0.5 and it's red, and that will do the same thing. All I've done there is I've assigned rule above and below to the same return, and the other one we've done assigned it to either return. So go OK. OK, so that's going to go in there. This mine isn't exact, but yours, you're going to do that. This stuff, same again, exactly the same when you get to this next thing. So just draw, uh, um, draw a text box there. So this thing, so this one you've done, you want two columns up here. You've got two, you want that to be five. All this stuff, okay, so that, get line that up with the box. Go back and get the text, a great place to shop, down to 5993. So we should be getting close to where, so this one, great place to shop, down to this number here, you can see that. So if I edit, cut that stuff, come across. paste into there use your eyedropper a lot okay so we know that this one stops here I think it's here yep so function enter that one across and now you just want to you would use paragraph styles which we've done but because it's only a one-off page we're just going to use um, this one so that will go into there okay another way you could do it is um, yeah, that's it. That'll go into there. Or another way you could have done it is just copied that whole thing into there. Just change the word to you want to whatever you wanted to change it to, and then using the direct selection tool. So I've just changed that to I haven't got the word in front of me. So that's just a new word. Yeah, and then go through this one, click on the icon, and move it across to the next one. And then you just move this stuff around accordingly to fit. Yeah. Okay. That's that stuff. This is only going to be two columns for this one. 
This one you've already done. You've done pie charts. I've given you all the information. I've given you all the things to do. That will be done in Illustrator and you've got an exact tutorial on how to do that will be supplied. And when you do get that right, just a matter of file place, go through. I know this isn't your, um, this isn't the what you're after, but so this one, so if it was your thing, so then your videos, your watches will go there. I mean, that's obviously not a graph, it's a girl, but that's all you're doing. Okay, so you can put one graph in there another option if you go option if you copy that box down you can use your links palette over here and with that girl you can relink that girl this will be the different great graph in your case but you relink that with what it's going to be and so you've got whatever your thing is and it might be this one and then so your different graph will go into there accordingly okay so when you're done all done. It's all finished. You've obviously finished it off. Check everything off. Make sure everything's right. A couple of things to do. Go to your layers palette. Right? And actually get rid of the background layer. Okay. So this one. So delete layer. Right? So I've got rid of my last layer. Yep. There's this one here. So on this one. Oh good. You've deleted the last layer. All you've got is your content layer now. You've got your graph. It'll, yours will have a graph in there, not this. Right. All finished. You just want to save this now as a as a spread as PDF. So export PDF presets. I just smallest. If it was a printing job, it would be high quality print, but smallest file size. Okay. But this one. So this is your test. That's so your name. DPS. And either the date or test or whatever we've asked into the correct folder. So I'm just saving this as a low res PDF. There's a couple of things to do here now. You want it to be spreads, okay? That's a big one, all right? And that will print it as one, two. It'll save it over two pages, all right? That's the first thing you're going to do. And then you want marks. So you want crop marks because you want it to generate its crop marks where it's going to print them out. You want page information that will give you a page number. And you want to use the bleed settings, which is five millimeters of what you've done, okay? So if I go smallest file size, crop marks, but if you're ever confused, you can actually just check everything. But in this case, all you really need is your crop marks and your page information. And that will just do all pages for now. Okay, just go export. It's all the spreads. Go OK. And that's going to open up the PDF that we just did. So if we get up to our page document, so you've done this before. There's your pages. I'm just going to get rid of that page using Acrobat. Okay, so I'm going to delete pages, delete this first page, delete selected. Okay, so now I've got mine, so this is my PDF. So if I look at my PDF now, it's going to look, it looks funny with this, but yours will have the graph. It's got the trim marks which we asked it to do. Page information down here is the untitled, gives you the date when you did it, and that's what you'll be handing in. So you've, if you can do all this, you're doing wonderfully. So a couple of things to remember, which I may not have mentioned the first time around. When you get back to the InDesign element to this, just remember that there is a solid, there's a color behind this, okay? So when you get to that one, just do, I would still have had my thing. So all I want, I would probably put this on another layer. Okay. So these layers, make a new layer. This is going to be my strip. Yep, this one. And there is just a strip. I won't have it exactly here, but I'm just going to go through and we'll use the eyedropper and click on the one. But it's, it's around, it's like a, it's a yellowy, a darky kind of color, like this kind of peachy color. Go OK. And then that goes behind this and just make sure so that will sit something along the lines like that. But the way you can do it is you can just have that thing. When you've got your picture in, click on what this thing is. OK. This one, you could have used your eyedropper and just say it was that bit of that girl. You can see it's doing the bit of the face, but you just eyedrop the bits in the background. But that all should work. That'll be fine. So what you want to do, yours will look something like that. And off you go. Save it as a PDF and hand it in. Okay, thanks. That's a lot of work, a lot of exercise, but you should be fine to be doing all that.